Welcome to worship for Sunday, May 23rd, 2021, the day of Pentecost. We celebrate the birthday of the church today, and we hear familiar scripture. The first is scripture from Acts chapter 2, the coming of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 14, and also verse 27. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophesy, to another the, the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of the one Spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And skipping down to verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. This is the word of God. May God bless it to our understanding. I am rather fond of Pentecost. I think those who know me know that. Um, maybe it's because it falls near my birthday every year. Maybe because... It's near the end of the school year, so there is this sense of finishing something or beginning something. Maybe because it is near the beginning of summer, so there is this sense of a vast open freedom 
surrounding us and in front of us. Maybe it's because we call Pentecost the birthday of the church, and I love the church. The church has always been a place of home and welcome for me, and it is certainly a place of purpose and calling. I'd like to think my love of the holy day of Pentecost is theological because Pentecost reminds us of God's presence with us. But honestly, who doesn't and what doesn't remind us of God's presence? Pentecost is the day we recognize the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church, the day we celebrate that Holy Spirit. And I love the Holy Spirit. I don't understand the Holy Spirit at all, but I love the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is mystery and power and imagination and creativity and diversity. As soon as I think I get the Holy Spirit figured out, then the wind blows and my understanding changes. Did you get that double meaning about the wind blows? Yeah, it's a bad pun because the Spirit is often referred to as wind and breath. Both the Greek pneuma and the Hebrew ruach can be translated in all three ways, wind, breath, spirit. Frequently in the Bible, a rushing wind, a gentle breeze, a powerful storm, a quiet whisper, a deep breath, a flutter, a gasp, a sigh, all of these will point to the presence of God. Frequently, God will ride the wind and settle in in our own breath. Within us, around us, through us, for us, the Holy Spirit is the power of God, the purpose of God, the presence of God with us. The Spirit is fire and energy and chaos and order as well at the same time control and peace and sustained provision for us. I love the Holy Spirit. I don't understand the Holy Spirit, I say, but I am understood by that Holy Spirit. God reaches us, empowers us, and moves us through the Holy Spirit. We worship God in spirit. We touch and know and experience God in that spirit today. Having said all of that, there is so much more to say and really nothing that needs to be said. The sermon could get very confusing <laughs> very quickly. So moving on to the practical. Uh, part of why I love this day of Pentecost is that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and when God poured spiritual gifts over the church and into each disciple. And we celebrate that that legacy continues. We believe this gifting was the first of many gifts, that in fact the Holy Spirit brings gifts to every church and every person as gift of God. These gifts come in varieties of ways. Sometimes we recognize them, sometimes we don't. But always, the gifts God gives are meant to call us to a purpose, to call us to God. We are meant to use any gifts that we have been given in order to help people to connect with God, in order to help people to draw closer to the God who loves us. The gifts are widely and wildly diverse, from artistic talent to musical abilities to wisdom in decision-making to friendliness and to organizational skills to a welcoming nature, anything else, our gifts are wider than our imaginations. God promises that each and every one of us, every single person has been given a gift to share, a purpose to share. Many gifts, 
to share. The reading from Corinthians for today helps to clarify some of the gifts of the Spirit among us. Corinthians was written several years after the events of Acts chapter 2, written to a church trying to figure out how to live that faith, how to live out faith and commitment to Christ in a world that did not know Christ fully, much like we continue to do today. There, there were, they were arguing in, in Corinth about uh, which gifts were most important, uh, which gifts proved that you had received the Holy Spirit of God. Amazingly, we are still arguing about that, about which gift makes you better, which gift makes you part of Jesus Christ. They thought that some gifts were obviously better than other gifts, that they thought that it was better, for instance, to be a great speaker than to be a quiet person of faith or prayer, or that it was better to speak in tongues than it might be to tell a Bible story. The scripture for today says, no, 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 that's not so. All gifts of the Spirit are good gifts of the Spirit. And all gifts of the Spirit are given to the right person at the right time for the right purpose. The key is to use any gift that you have been given to glorify God and to help others. One gift is not better than another gift. Every person who receives the Spirit of God receives the same Spirit of God. I'm not any more or any less filled with the Spirit of God than you are. One person is not any more or any less blessed by God's Spirit. We all are one in Christ. We all are equally blessed, equally empowered with God's gifts, and equally called to share those gifts in the world, to serve God in the world. The call of that scripture is to let the Spirit of God move, to let the Spirit of God explode, really, in and through you and what you do in life. That's what happened on that first day of Pentecost for the Christian church, an explosion of the Spirit, wind and fire reaching everyone, touching everyone, filling everyone. Let God's Spirit excite you, inspire you, and the power of God will transform not only you, but the world. The scripture says you are the body of Christ. You, you have gifts to share. You have a part to play. You have a job to do. You have been given, have been given and filled with the one true, powerful, Holy Spirit of God. And collectively, God can work miracles of grace, healing, energy, and hope through all of us and with all of us. Let God's power move through you and transform the world. Let God's presence empower you to reach out to others, to care for others, to share the good news of Jesus' love. On that first day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God was visible among them. On that first day of Pentecost, the disciples received courage and power, energy and joy, passion and inspiration. So they ran out into the streets and told everybody what was going on, told everybody what miracles were happening among them. That first Pentecost, 3,000 people were touched by God's grace and moved to serve Jesus Christ in the world. There were only 12 original disciples, but 3,000 people were moved by those 12 in one day. How much more can God work through and among us? How much more can God use us to live the good news of God's love in the world? If, if we just get out of the way and let the Spirit move, let the Spirit of God pour through us into the world. You have been called. You have been touched 
by God's Spirit. You have been transformed by Jesus Christ. You are alive in Christ. You have been given gifts by that Holy Spirit. Use them to be the body of Christ in the world, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus here, now, wherever you go. I want you to imagine what that would look like for the church. Imagine if all of our gifts were let loose in the world, doing the work of God. Imagine what would that look like. Imagine what God could do through us. Visualize it. Picture it. Think about the details. What could God do in us if we let go and let the Spirit move? What could be changed? What, who could we reach? How could we help people? How could people see God? How might God use us to share love? 2,000 years ago, the Spirit of God swept through a room like this. Actually, it was a room probably much smaller than this. God's Spirit came into the world in wind and fire, in power and purpose. God's Spirit moved 3,000 people in one day to come to Jesus. Just imagine what God could do among us. Just imagine what God will do through you. Just imagine. And go out into the world and share the good news of God's love. Share the spirit that has been poured over you and into you and live the grace that you have received through Jesus Christ. Go in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen.